Hello, and welcome to another episode. Do I sound like a movie announcer? Of Omnivorous Arts Podcast. Where? Where it's raw and it's raw and <laughs> cut, just like you like it. Just like that like last we, It's thing. almost like we talked about this raw. before the episode started. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's raw and uncut. That's true. That was very yeah. raw. My goal is to have every episode start like garbage. <laughs> oh, I hope so, and I can keep, make that happen. Keep the viewers' expectations real low. <laughs> this is where it's gonna be. This is where I know you want it to be. It's true. How do I wait for me to? Oh yeah, that. There we go. <laughs> That'll look better. Um, today we are gonna talk about and draw Monster Hunter stuff because mm -hmm. Rise got announced somewhat recently, and we're both super fucking excited for it. And uh, I am really much so. Me too, yeah. Like, having another Monster Hunter that goes back to, like, the mainline versions is exciting. So, Because mm -hmm. World felt like a step outside of the... God damn it, my fucking chair is so squeaky. World felt like a step out of, like, the norm for it, and now we're just we're curving back to the norm with Rise, which is what I'm excited about. I wonder uh, if it's going to get as much love as World it's going it's like it's so it's not going to hold on let me bring up my let me bring up my well, i'll just get started on drawing we don't want to waste too much time Let's see that that was my warm-up drawing hey enigma want to move okay so i don't think that uh i don't think that Rise is going to get as much love as World, and specifically, I actually think Rise is going to get a lot of hate. Wait, what? Don't pause the preview. What do you mean? Okay, I fixed it. All right. Um, I, I specifically think that Rise is going to get some hate because of uh, uh, a lot of people who. Oh, well, that's not a good spot for that. Um, a lot of people who came into Monster Hunter, came in um, into World. So, like, uh, their first experience with a Monster Hunter game is World, uh, which is, like, a completely different experience than what we're used to as, like, well, what happened? Um, this, this, this stream is starting real good. Very uncut. Very raw. Got horns. I'm drawing Zenogre, by the way. Because he's my he's one of my favorite monsters. Why? Uh because Portable Third was one of my favorite games and he was the flagship monster for it. Like remember Portable Third? Where everything was like Japanese themed, um and it had it was the first one yes. that had the hot spring in the guild hall and stuff. Mm hmm Um that was one of my favorite uh That was on the PSP, right? Yeah, and it never came out in America. Remember, we had to, like, we started by getting, like, a, a Japanese version and just playing it in Japanese. And mm -hmm. then, uh, like, a, you know, a couple months later or weeks or however long, uh, they came out with a patch uh, for it. Yeah, they had came out with a patch, but all it patched was, like, the important menuing and stuff. Um, yeah, it was, like, a fan patch, too. So it wasn't, like, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't an official very patch intense. or anything. That stuff didn't exist back when we played on the PSP. Mm -mm. I make this an over cute as fuck. Cute as fuck, boy. But no, so a lot of players' first experiences with Monster Hunter is gonna be World, and World is like a is like a whole different thing, you know? There's a lot of luxuries in World that probably isn't gonna exist in Rise, because they're gonna go back to um uh, they're going to go back to the way things used to be, like possibly uh, not not being allowed to move when um, when using potions sure. and stuff. That's yeah, something, that's something that they allowed in World, and it might be gone in Rise because that's not how it used to be, and it it depends on the direction they want to go. But like players have to be prepared for that. For one, that. the biggest thing is when they got when they added the like moving potions they also made it so that the monsters didn't stop as often yeah yeah that was the that was the thing too so it'll 
it'll kind of uh, depend on um, how the behavior of like how the makers of Monster Hunter want to do the behavior of the monster because you were allowed to uh, move while doing potions but the monster also like never gave you an opportunity um, to do anything. I'm also excited for them to hopefully bring back more of the old monsters because they didn't bring they didn't bring back too many in Monster Hunter World. Like there's still some monsters that I'm that I'm missing, like the Cutku and things like that. Oh yeah, that for I'm sure. really bummed out they didn't bring back. Well, and you know, I saw in the um, uh, I saw in the trailer that at the very least, like the bear was coming back, Azeros, uh, which probably oh, okay, which probably means that like the bunnies coming back also, and the the like armadillo guy, I forget his name, and the bunny armadillo. Yeah, he's like red, like he or. Yeah, he's oh, like a the red, anteater thingy. The anteater armadillo thing that would like flick his tongue out yeah, and paralyze yeah, yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. I liked I miss uh the the ones from tr the water one where you can swim. I miss the gibble? Gibble, gibble? yeah. Or no, uh, oh, you have to you have to fish it out. No, 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 gibble's a pokemon. Um gobble. 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 No, I like yeah. gibble. I like hunting gibbles too. Wow, that's rude. Gotta chin first. Oh, he's got like a big old spike on his. I miss that. Like those yeah. little those the water ones. The water. Well, that was a gimmick too. Yeah, that was like the gimmick swimming. of try, and and we've talked about this before, but we haven't talked about it on stream. So I'll bring it up again. Um. Every every monster hunter has had a gimmick, okay? Every single one of them has had a gimmick uh, except for the first one and portable. So the first well, I guess portable's gimmick was that it's portable, but then they all were portable going forward, so not really a gimmick, but like Well, they keep some gimmicks in some yeah. of them. Well, like so the if first they, if they play out well, they keep them. So like the first monster hunter and portable were gimmickless. They were just the game. But then they were yeah. like, "Hey, we need to make this more interesting." Um Let's give it a gimmick. And then, so starting with Portable Second, the gimmick was ice, like uh, like a snowy area. They introduced a snowy area and like snowy monsters. Yeah. Um, this, like making his body too bulky for how cute I made his head. Uh, Looks normal. Fine, it's fine, it's fine. Um, and then. So, uh, and then Unite's gimmick was the first introduction of G-Rank. Um, and that stayed. And that stayed, yeah, because G-Rank was, like, a really popular thing. And what do we have after Unite? Uh, we had um, Portable 3rd, which its gimmick was, like, um, being, like, very culturally Japan um, in its uh, design. Uh Arms kind of go out like this. I'll touch these up in a bit, but um, and what do we have so after we that? Have Monster Hunter. That's portable. That was portable third, and then we moved on to try. I think was try. after that, correct? And try's gimmick was water. Um, and then try G. Try G was just the G version of of try. So like it, it was still. Like its gimmick was still Tri's <laughs> gimmick, so they were they were like a pair. There wasn't a new gimmick; it was just um, like a, a Tri version of the of the old gimmick. Um, and uh, let's see, what do we have after that? Four. Four. Let me think. What was four? That was a 3DS one. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Um, that was the art. The oh. ones with the arts. No, Hunter no, it wasn't. You're you're thinking of uh, you're thinking of generations. You're thinking of X and X and double X. Uh, I just like make him like sitting like a dog. <laughs> like a doge, do it. What did four do? 
Uh, four's gimmick was uh, mounting. Remember, that was the that was the first game where you could mount oh. monsters. Because remember, in that one, you couldn't. Um, remember, you couldn't attack when somebody else was mounted. You weren't supposed to attack the monster because it would actually yeah. fuck the guy riding it up. And then everybody was like, "Hey, Capcom, that's kind of dumb. Like, like what better time is there to attack a monster than like when your friend is like on top of it? You know, He's and Capcom, riding him dirty. Capcom was like, "Hey, you right, you right." This this is an ogre looks there. ridiculous. <laughs> uh, what do I do? What do I do? Give him. Oh, I have an actual list of of how popular of units sold. Sales of millions of units as of June 2020. Is World at like the top or one of the top? I assume it would. Be World is ranked as number one with 16.1 million units sold. Makes sense. <clears throat> the second one with wow the gap between first and second place is immense but it's Monster Hunter World Iceborne with 5.8 million units sold so wait the Iceborne DLC beats out all other Monster Hunters yes wait is this is this America only or world world worldwide oh okay that's interesting although like so Monster Hunter has been a cultural phenomenon in Japan for a while, so, like, it it would make sense that the first game to, like, sell really well is the one that sells well in, like, America, you know what I mean? In the world, yeah. Well, guess what the third one is? Um, honestly, I'm gonna say try for the Wii. Try for I the Wii? Because I because I feel uh, like uh, I, well I can tell by your action that I'm wrong. already wrong but I feel Wait, like we try for the Wii might have been popular due to its um, this down here I, I like the head I like how the head turned out but <laughs> I don't want to draw the body I didn't think about so it. so no I'll draw some, I'll draw it's some actually, more stuff rank number three with four point nine million units sold is actually Monster Hunter Portable Three or Freedom Three. Oh, really? So, wow. Yeah. So it wasn't released anywhere but Japan. So it's interesting that that one sold... That one sold the most... Um, Did Freedom 3... Didn't that one get a United States release? That's no, no, Freedom no. Fre 3? Freedom 3 is the one with Zenogar. That's, that's Monster Hunter Portable 3rd. Yeah. The reason it was called Portable 3rd is because in Japan it was Monster Hunter Portable, Portable 2, and Portable 3rd. And then in English it was Monster Hunter Freedom, Freedom 2nd, Freedom Un... Oh, no, no, no. Wait, is it Unite? Is it Unite that that was the best? Is that the one they're talking about? Can you click on it and have it display the... No. You're asking a lot. Uh... Like lightning bolts, right? Portables aren't even on here. Well, then it's... Well, Freedom is portable. I'm just wondering if Freedom 3 means Unite, or if it means, um... It's... Uh, no, Freedom 3 is Monster Hunter. It's the one with Zenogre. It's the one you're talking about. Oh, okay. I'm seeing if that was released. It was not. hundred percent. It was not. It was only released Which, in Japan. That's interesting. It was so popular and in Korea. Japan. And Korea. Oh, that might be why. Alright. There's... And then... <laughs> and then for the fourth place is Generations with 4.3 million units sold. That makes sense. They did advertise Generations as being like super anime-y, so it would kind of make sense. But like the rest of them were like 4, 4, 4, 3, 3, 3, 2, and then the worst one was Monster Hunter's Free Monster Hunter Freedom. Well, yeah, because that was the first one to... That was, so that was like the first PSP one, and that was... Uh... Like, it just hadn't established itself anywhere as, like, a, a game yet. Like, that was when the cultural phenomenon of Monster Hunter was beginning, you know? Freedom 3 makes a lot of sense, though. Or, uh, yeah, Freedom 3. Give me something else to what draw. Did we, we I don't, don't want to draw Zenogre's body, so I'm just, like, I just have this. Okay. Um, draw from just, memory. From memory. Fuck, okay. All right. Okay, I'm going to give you something obscure. Draw the turkey one. The you know what I mean. Hypnock? Hypnock. Hypnock? Oh. Hypnock. Oh. 
Oh shit! What are you doing to me? I'll let you draw like hip knock. Draw it from memory for a little bit. I go ahead and pull up his information, and then you can Google search him. Damn, him I don't remember him looking like that. So good luck. Give him a fucking smug ass smile because he's a bitch. Remember he was. The intro a... Remember he was the introduction to G rank, out? and he was so hard. He, he was. was in, he was in. Was Uni he the first G rank one? Yeah, yeah. He was. So he was Unite. in Unite, and and your first experience even fighting him, period, was in you. It was in G rank. So like he was not mm -hmm. a monster until you got to G rank, and then he was the first G rank monster you would fight. And he was. That's how they should do it. Hard as fuck. <laughs> oh my god. All right. Well, that's also like that back when we didn't have like the ability to look it up. So I remember him. I remember him. I feel like I remember him having a head that looked like fucking badminton. Uh <laughs> oh the fucking... bird. Yeah. So something like that. Then I wanna say that he had like giant soulless eyes, like fucking He looked like he could kill your entire family with with zero qualms about it. So he just had these big fucking Your memory about him is way better than mine was. Let me look at some information about him. Oh, wait, that's, those aren't soul at size. Hold on, let me go. Oh, yeah, you're right. He came out Monster Hunter Freedom Unite. I believe that one was the first English... I think that was the first English one. Big soul at size. Right? What? Unite was the first what? The English one. United States. No, the portable... So there was Monster Hunter for the PS2. No, no, which... no, but like for the PSP. No, because there was portable and, and so Monster Hunter Portable came out and I got that before I knew you guys, uh, you and mm -hmm. Vince, um, and I played it for a little while, but I couldn't beat Cutku. I had, like, I, I wasn't good at the game. Like, you know, I did well up until, like, the first real monster, and I just was bad. I was, like, 10 or something, 9. I was just not good. Okay? No excuse. Uh, and then Freedom 2 came out, and at that time, I knew you guys, and when I got it, uh, I was, like, playing it at Hastings once, and you and Vince were like, what are you playing? And I was like, oh, this is Monster Hunter Portable 2. It's cool. You can, like, kill monsters and stuff. And you guys were like, is there a multiplayer? And I was like, yeah. And you guys were like, well, shit, well, let's get that. And that's what started us off. And then Unite came out, and we were bad at Portable 2, or Freedom 2 for a while. Like, I don't think we ever beat anything major. Um, and then Unite came out, and that's where we, like, really started to, like, sink in and start to get really good at the game. Okay, so now what? I remember the big soulless eyes. Wow. Um... How did his body look? I don't think his body was anything special, honestly. You don't think so? Ooh. Fat belly. Fat bird belly. And... There's a silver hip knock. Is that in Frontier? Frontier, I, yeah. Yeah, because I only remember Hypnock being in Unite. I think they got rid of him after that. That's who they should bring back. Here. <laughs> I remember him having a longer neck than this. Let me... You sure? You'll like it. Longer than, longer than I gave him one. <laughs> Give him a neck at all. What does his armor look like? Armor uh, weapons. Wasn't his armor the, like... The belly dancer armor? Oh no, that was, that's the Kuli Yaku from... I miss the Kutku greatsword. I miss the Kutku period. It's unfortunate that World decided to go the route of, like... We're just going to introduce, like, super strong, powerful monsters from now on. They, I feel like World could have done a lot better if they, like, drip-fed us new, uh, new monsters, like, you know, like, one a month, where they were just like, here's Kangala Law, here's, uh, what, what other monsters don't exist? What is Frontier Z? It was a continuation of Frontier. They they needed to like update everything, so they just came out with like an update of it. 
I'm pretty sure. And then, uh... Okay. That's Hypnoc from memory. I don't know how my canvas got turned, but... Alright, I still got some canvas space. Hit me with another one. Another Oof, one. Um... Another one. Another one. Uh... Oh, you know what I want to draw? I want to draw yeah. Camellios. Draw Camellios. There you go. Bullhorn. Big fuck. Oh, hold on. I want to look up Hypnock and see how fucking yeah. wrong I was. Hold on. Will you stop fucking pausing my stream to save resources, you dick shit? Ugh, whatever. Oh. Alright, hold on. Let me look up Hypnock. I want to see how bad I did. Hip. Knock. And you guys at home who are watching can look up Hypnock yourself and see, especially if you don't. It's actually. Oh, fuck. Hypnocatrice. Oh, it is Hypnocatrice. It was Hypnoc in like the Japanese one that we played, and then when it came out, it was Hypnocatrice. Oh shit! I was kind of on. I was kind of all right with his head, and I was right that I gave him too long of a neck. Yeah, you were right. Oh, but I forgot about his like primary butt feathers, and he did, he looked a little bit more dragony than I made him. I made him too bird-like. Oh well, that's fun. It's fun. Okay. Alright, where am I? Like how he's tonguing Hypnocatrice from over there. Yeah, he was, uh... He was, a uh, Holy Elder Dragon. That was why, that was why he's my favorite. Ed. I liked Camellios. I liked his longsword. Oh, the invisible Just one? Turned invisible. Yeah, that was cool. I, uh... I liked his armor, too. It made you look like a wizard. Yeah. That? And we all had it because it was, like, the best armor to fight uh, Eukonulos in. Remember him? Shovel Draw? Which one was that? Oh, my God, yeah. Shovel Draw, the ice guy? I thought the nicknames we had for all of them. Jay like Leno. Jay Leno. <laughs> what else is there? Remember that no the Monster Hunter World Namielli? Yeah. He's related to Camellios. Really? Yeah. Well, like related I'm monsters. Even, I'm even more mad. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Got him I, I, instead I, of Camellios. I really like Namiel, but fuck, dude, Camellios is awesome. Like, I hate that they just forgot about him. He's cool. Let's see what else? I think he has like this th kind of thing a little bit. Then. This thing. I remember him having uh, like short, stubbly legs. Hypnoc, can you move? Tell your bitches to leave you alone, Marco. Right, we'll shrink it. How'd you down. hear that? What do you mean, how did I hear it? I just heard it. It just made a sound. Over. Give me some more space to work with him. You just work it. Work it. And then I remember him having I remember him having short stubbly legs. Wow. What is Monster Hunter Online? Is that like Frontier? Monster Hunter Online was um one of them one of them was Frontier. Like one of them was the older one. 
And one of them was the newer one. I think Monster Hunter Online is what Monster Hunter started out as. And then they updated it and turned it into Frontier, I think. And then they updated it again and turned it into Frontier Z, and then it, like, died out. Or, then, of course, you can't forget his, like, big, goofy tail that ended with... Did he have wings? He had wings, right? Fucking goddammit. Wait, did he have wings? Uh, Kaku? Or Camellios? He has like little like fat, fat boy wings, little doofy. Like, wings? You know, yeah, like those. Are, you can't fly with those. Like you can try, bitch. No, he actually had giant wings. I'm sorry. Well, my Camellios doesn't have little doofy wings because that's cute as shit. <laughs> I love him. Isn't he cute? <laughs> like he's he's fucking, actually really cute. I gave him like derpy eyes. Hold on, this is his. Those uh, look like his normal eyes. <laughs> I know. He's a derpy boy. Let's see, and then this song is like. Hello, Enigma. Oh, all right. Just invade my my show. Yeah, we're guest starring uh, your cat. <laughs> <laughs> He did steal your items. I honestly forgot that he did that. And he was the worst because, like, Gypsaros and the Melinx stole your stuff, but they, they were programmed to not steal, uh, like, they couldn't steal, like, there were certain things that they couldn't steal, and one of them... They were your power charm, your armor charm, your power talent, and your armor talent. Because remember, we always had all four of those in our inventory because they were mm -hmm. just like passive buffs for having them on you. Yeah. Um, but Camellios could absolutely fucking steal those. <laughs> so yeah. every time you fought him, players would like, you would intentionally put that stuff in your box and you'd fight him without those because you were like, well, I'd rather fight him without him than have him steal it. So Yeah, and lose it. But they were or expensive too. Yeah, before I before I finish, uh, I'll do an ode to uh, ode to you. Cross hatching. Lights coming from. Eight on this side of him. Really like this. Community. I really hope he maybe he comes back. Guys, do you? Yeah, because honestly, um, honestly, world shot themselves in the foot by. Uh, like they just, I mean, they just released like super uber powerful monsters, and now nobody would want them to release anything else because why release, um, why release something like Cut Coup when nobody's gonna make the weapons or armor, nobody's gonna, you know, use part of Cut Coup because like, you know, Alatrion exists, Fatalis exists. Like nobody's even gonna hunt Cut Coup if they release him because why, you know? Yeah. Also, most of these characters, like these guys, they had fun weapons. Like, they're goofy-looking weapons. Yeah. All right, well, this is... I think we're... We're probably, like... Ah! You always do this to me. 
hey we're at just about 30 minutes too so that's a perfect uh ah what happened what did you pull up your stream yeah i'm just feeling okay hold on well, let me wait stop but streaming. like they're goofy weapons and world was always like hey you know what i don't we don't want to do is have goofy weapons yeah okay so that was the thing we never finished talking about it. we got a bit sidetracked but um flash forward so every every game had a gimmick right and flash forward wait hold on i can't see will you stop your stream and restart it i can't see anything all right it's just showing a loading screen for me God damn it. Okay, there we go. You're good. So flash forward all the way to World, and World's gimmick was realism, right? It was realistic. Yeah. So it was more about the ecology of monsters, and it was about finding footprints and studying the monster to learn more about them. And once you've studied a monster enough, you just knew where the monster was at and whatnot. So, so when it came to doing like weapons and armor, they had to be realistic about it. And you know, now, now, you know, at, towards the end of Monster Hunter World's life, there are silly things, but it took them forever to get there. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, like, like in the base game, the it, fish. It, it, they have the fish weapons now. Yeah. But like in the base game, like it was the, like, oh, I'm going to make this bone longsword. And it looks like a bone longsword. And now I'm going to upgrade it to the Rathalos. Or like, uh, that's not a good example because the Rathalos one actually changes. Um, let's see. Okay, the ones I can think of are great swords then. So it's like you make the metal great sword and it just looks like a metal great sword. And then you upgrade it to like the the Gyros metal great sword. And it's just the metal great sword with some gyro scales along the base. And it's like, sure, I agree that that's realistic. Like, I'm not to... going to be upset about it. Yeah. But I'm like, I miss the whimsicalness. Right. Are of you drawing... what was. Are you drawing oh, a yeah, I'm... donkey? You... It's close. I am drawing a Kongalala. Did the Kongalala look like a donkey? It looks like a hippo. I don't remember him having ears. Did he really have ears? Yep. Oh. Little stubby ears. You gave him like long Legolas elf ears. What are your elf ears? What are your elf ear ears here, Kungalalala? <laughs> and so while while that was a cool gimmick for world, uh like I, I remember a lot of the players having issues with like the weapon designs and stuff because they weren't fun. And so I understand I understand Capcom's perspective when they were going, hey, we were trying to make a realistic, you know, Monster Hunter game. And it's like, that's cool. But now that we're moving away from it and going back to Rise, like, I can't wait for silly weapons again and and cool fantasy weapons, you know? When I make a pair of electric dual swords, I want them to look like twin chainsaws, you know what I mean? That's fucking rad. Right? right? That's like, what I'm excited for. You know, I, I, I liked when the weapons were... You're really struggling with his little quaff. Are you doing all right over there? I, yeah, I'm fucking struggling. I'm just gonna do this. I'm like a. That's not how it works. <laughs> what do you mean? But just... like, yeah, there wasn't any fun weapons in here. I mean, eventually we got to a point where. Uh... Does he have? Oh, you're just gonna give him a pompadour? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. He's got a pompadour now. Um. He wasn't agreeing with me, so he's getting a uh, pompadour. That's fair. Um, and so going into Rise, I'm expecting a bit more fantasy. And from what I've seen, all right, you might need to alter that pompadour because it just looks like a dick. <laughs> that little that little crease that you just did, yeah. We're just there. We go. Yeah, we're entering penis territory. <laughs> and while while Kangala Law, specifically the Emerald one, was a huge dickhead. Uh, <laughs> How's this? Maybe portraying him that way might not be good. There you go, heart head.
but from what i've seen from rise you know the the trailers and stuff it looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun there's like this you're you're gonna get this whip thing that you can just like oh, whip oh yeah yeah like this like light whip or something it's this weird fucking magical whip that you can just like whip the air and like grab onto nothing and like propel yourself up into the air and stuff and i've seen some really cool combos with uh seen some really cool combos that that monster hunter has shared on their twitter where they're like you know oh if you're using this weapon you can use this to jump into the air and do this attack and it's like this cool combo thing um so i'm excited about that one thing that i really want from rise honestly one of the biggest things that i want from rise is a new weapon we haven't had a new weapon in a long time uh and i think it's time i think it's time to give us a new weapon like what? What would you want as a weapon? So, one of the easiest ones that they could probably do is um, it's a weapon that exists in Frontier. It's like a Tonfa. You know, like, you know Tonfas, right? Yeah. Um, it's like these Tonfa, and it's very, it's very like rapid hit, sort of dual dual blades kind of combo y like ba 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 very like rapid hits, like mobile mobile and small rapid strikes is like its MO. And uh with Frontier dying, basically, you have this you have this untapped pool of ideas from that game that you can now bring into mainline Monster Hunter games to improve them. And I'm yeah, you really could. Or and here's another thing that I think would be really honestly, I think this would be a smart move on Capcom's part because games like this do really well, is to make a frontier for like America or like for the world. Make like a worldwide MMO Monster Hunter. So because Frontier died, so what reboot it, remaster, remake it into a MMO that the whole world can uh that the whole world can play and then you have this open beta style monster hunter similar to games like Warframe or Genshin Impact where you could just perpetually continue to create infinite content and just release it to people yeah hey, we made a new monster here have that hey we made a new weapon style have that hey we you know, made a new armor set, have that, and they just, hey, here's a new event, here's a new collaboration, they're just like, honestly, like, in my opinion, I think the smartest move for Monster Hunter would be to do that, but, you know, I don't know if they're, I don't know what the, um, what the hesitation is when it comes to <coughs> what the hesitation is when it comes to uh, making an MMO, and I don't know if there's like maybe legal hesitation mm -hmm. that they like, you know, will have to jump through or something. I'm not sure, but games, uh, and then do do take a, take a Genshin Impact or Warframe um, approach to a to a Monster Hunter Monster Hunter MMO and make it free. Yeah. And then have uh, like have paid cosmetic content, you know, have like have, you know, g definitely give like an ample amount of layered armor to free players, you know, if they want. But then also have like cool DLC layered armors or really fantasy stuff or do like a like do a collab with and similar to how World did a collab with a uh, Devil May Cry and you could get Dante's armor. Have that be a purchasable yeah. layered armor set for like you know one ninety nine or two ninety nine, and watch tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people drop two bucks on a skin. You just made four hundred thousand dollars, right? If a couple hundred thousand, so if you have if you have a game that has millions of players, let's say like five million players, which is not even that much for a game like that, right? Yeah, five million players, okay. Maybe t like you could, you could estimate that maybe ten percent of those players are people who would be willing. At the very least, ten percent of these players would be people who are willing to spend money on the game. And so, when you release a skin that's two dollars, you can estimate that maybe five hundred thousand people would buy that skin. 
that's you just made a million dollars by releasing one two dollar skin because everybody can afford two bucks if it's something that they like you know it's like not they, like you should go into marketing for monster hunter right and then also because because it's a capcom ip they could do tons of really really cool stuff like how you know i mean we all know we all know what uh, Monster Hunter has been doing for a while because it's a Capcom game. That's why we have Resident Evil skins. That's why we have uh, Devil May Cry skins. That's why Mega Man is an IP in the game. You know, they have, they have this huge pool f- with which to pull from Street Fighter. Capcom's a pretty big company, so they could. Uh, it, they have like uh, yeah, they have ample space to be pulling shit from everywhere. Right, and so they so if they came out with a Monster Hunter MMO, they could start with that, right? Start with their IPs, and then they would probably because Monster Hunter became a fairly large game because of World, um, a very large worldwide game. I'm sure there would be plenty of other video game companies out there who would be like, "Hey, we would love to collab with you." Kind of like how because uh, The Witcher is not a is not a Capcom IP, but The Witcher was. Witcher did a collaboration with Monster Hunter, which was really fucking cool. Mm-hmm. Um, did you ever? Did you ever try it? I never finished it. Because, like, one of my favorite things about that IP was being able to um, was being able to go around as Geralt, and you could so you could pick up stuff just like you could pick up stuff as your hunter. But every time you picked it up, Geralt would say something that like related back to his own world. Like you'd you'd go pick up an herb, and he'd be like, "Huh, this plant has incredible healing properties. Interesting. The kinds of potions I could make from this would be amazing." Like he would just say shit like that, and he would see like the Apsiros, the dinosaur, like the lumbering herbivore dinosaurs, and he would say a comment about them. Yeah. He would just like you. So I literally spent like an hour as Geralt just trying to find everything, just running around the map trying to find whatever he could talk about. You know what I mean? Because it was just such a cool thing. And and I feel like that right there is another like potential resource that Monster Hunter could use if they decided to make some kind of uh, MMO, you know? Basically, I want a Monster Hunter MMO. That's what I'm trying to say. Get on it, Capcom. You want to watch? Get on it. Yeah. You know what this reminds me? I would of? like your something drawing. like that. Mm. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, but uh, your drawing is like if no, no, Kongolala and Etamon from Digimon fused. You were Etamon, it. the monkey with the Digimon. sunglasses, <laughs> the musician guy. Wait, give me a second. Let me see. You gotta remember him. There, it's a... I'm trying to do a microphone. Oh, a microphone mushroom? Ooh, oh, fuck, I need more caffeine. There you go. There you go. That's... Now he's ready to jam out with his cock out. That's the phrase. What were you saying? You'd like something like that, too? I would like an MMO kind of thing where it's Monster Hunter. But I don't know if they'll do it. Like, they're more... I don't know. I don't know why they didn't think it would work out. Because obviously, uh, Monster Hunter World is their version of, like, a free... Or... It's like a world version of a Monster Hunter Online. That's what it is. Yeah, allowing people Frontier to walk openly play so Monster together. Hunter World could run. <laughs> right. That's honestly what it is. Yeah, I feel you there. And and that's why I think that a Monster Hunter MMO could work because World was basically a Monster Hunter MMO light cuz you know, we never did it cuz we always would just create uh don't forget his ginormous man tits uh that kangalaw has all right oh yeah and make sure to really pronounce those nipples um I'll try uh so the world was basically monster hunter mmo light basically because 
while we never did it because we would always just join our own group and hunt with each other um instead of joining our like guild hall group that we made for just us you could just join a random hall that just had people just random people so you could just go join a random hall that had like 30 people throw a quest up people would join it and you just go hunt with them you know what i mean so like um yeah that in itself was basically you know a very open mmo style of of gameplay where you could just kind of hunt with anybody all around the world so what i see with world being as colossal of a success as it is is hey this works as a system so make another one but make it free and make it more like frontier and turn it to what am i trying to say So make make another one, but make it more MMO like Frontier and implement a lot of Frontier's things into it and then just go forward with that as a free game that people can play with a whole bunch of like paid cosmetic content. You know what I mean? Skins for your yeah. cats, skins for player number for yourself, weapon skins. Weapon skins. Like you could sell do a collaboration with Final Fantasy where players can buy a Cloud Greatsword skin or a Leon Gunblade Sword and Shield or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, it would be... I don't... Like, I wish I could speak with the fucking... Uh, like, the top brass of, like, mm-hmm. the people in charge of Monster Hunter and be like, listen, guys, this Miss, could fucking here, work. Listen here, Mr. Monster Hunter. Yeah, Mr. and Mrs. Monster Hunter, I have an idea. And it could work. But I, I really feel that way. I really feel like something like that could work. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because a lot of games are doing something like that now. Where they're like, they come out free for players to build hype and to, to get a solid player base. And then they just have paid content that makes them, you know, money. I just think Monster Runner Rise, I want to know what they're going to keep and what they're going to replace for the upcoming one. Yeah, and I wonder if just that whip is its only gimmick or if there's going to be more gimmicks. Well, you have like a pet, too. We have the dog. That's going to be interesting. You can like ride. That's going to be cool. Yeah, it is going to be cool. Will you, at the back of his head right there, sort of where you're drawing, give him like a little dove's tail. Like give him a little... A little swoop out, like behind his head, like his, like his pompadour is coming down and swooping out. You know what I'm saying? Not like a mullet, but that looks cool mullet. too. So leave it. He's got a mullet. Okay, a pompadour mullet. He's party at the front and on... party in the back. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I really lo- like. Okay. So I'm interested in like one of the things that I really want to see is what monsters are. What monsters are in Rise? And I wonder. Another thing that another thing that sort of interests me is I wonder if any world monsters are gonna make it in Rise. That's gonna be interesting to see because there's plenty of. Um, like world had plenty of old monsters in it but it would be interesting if it would be interesting if like they decided to move anjanath over into rise and 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 then if they do do that are they going to alter are they going to alter his move set to compensate for the fact that we're probably not going to be able to move while using potions like we used to or are we They're still going to be able to move that. while using potions? Oh, what what implements do you want in Monster Hunter Ri- or Rise that you that are in? Uh... Okay, so some smaller things World. are um, infinite pickaxe, bug net, and wet zones. Those were just That's asking too much. Those were just asking. unnecessarily meticulous things that just didn't need to happen. Those were good quality of life changes that they made because. 
do you remember you remember going out into like a mission like to the volcano or something and you'd get the secret area but oh you forgot to bring more pickaxes you remember that like and you'd be like fuck yeah. i forgot pickaxes but i got the secret area in the volcano which has like 11 mining points and tons of super rare stuff so like i feel like i could do without uh I feel like I could do without the the consumable pickaxes and bug nets like they did. Really? In and the whetstone. I want, that, was, that was another I thing. I want... That, I need a farm. I want a oh, fucking dude. farm like they had in... Oh, I miss the farm uh, so much. Where you can just go do like a bug tree thing. Yeah, yeah, get yeah. all yeah. of your bugs and your honey. Remember... Instead of have to cultivate it. Do you remember when you had the giant tree... And like the the you'd get like a big hammer and you'd have to like time it perfectly, but then you smack the tree and a whole bunch of bugs would fall down, and that would just get you like a yep. whole bunch of bugs at once. Yeah, I missed that, was, that shit. Yeah, that was awesome. And then there was the mining where you just uh, where you bring the cat like a barrel bomb, and he goes into like one of one of three tunnels. You pick one, and he goes into it with a bomb and explodes, and then it comes out, and he's got a whole bunch of. Uh, loot for you you remember that yeah orange shit and then there was the uh like you always had an app cirrus on your farm where you could like search behind him and find dung <laughs> there he is get your dung nice pompadour congala law i like it all right now give me a uh give me a from memory cut coup because we oh. still have we're, we're only at like 50 minutes or so so we got another 10 minutes for me to harass you that's perfect. From Emery Kutku. Because he's your boy. He's your fave. He's your fave. I want to see how well you remember him. I would like to see, and it seems like they're going to do this, uh, just from what I've seen from the um, the trailers and stuff that they've shown, is like freedom to climb anything and go anywhere because like monster hunter world gave you this this great sense of freedom when it came to uh when it came to going places you know you could just like because it gave you the whole map to explore without any loading screens you could just kind of go wherever and f you know figure shit out which was really fun you really could and with with rise being on the switch we know that it's not going to be as uh what's the word graphically or system systematically or what's the word i'm trying to say it's not going to be as advanced as world and we have to prepare no, ourselves it for that is not well there is no it's way it's going to be okay or, i'm not saying it's going to be a garbage like i'm not saying it's going to be garbage or anything but like world was on the ps4 and it and pc and it pushed those it pushed the i don't know if your ps4 does it too but as soon as i boot up world my ps4 sounds like a fucking jet engine going off like mine does not oh that's weird i think you need to clean your ps4 or like get something fixed on it no i i know that it's i know that it's something that people notice because i've seen memes about it where people are like they joke about starting up their world and their ps4 making all kinds of noise and stuff um so but it was just graphically intensive and it, like the the maps that it weird. gave you were quite large um but uh i'm i'm expecting with rise that we're going to we're going to keep this full map exploration element but the maps are not going to be as grandiose as worlds they'll be a little smaller um the graphics are obviously going to be Dude, I don't know. I couldn't even can't even fathom what you're doing over there. I don't even know. Are those his eyes? Yeah, those are his eyes. His eyes are just like right on top of his beak. <laughs> yeah, that's how it is. What are you talking about? That's exactly how he looks. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, so I feel like I feel like now that world or now that Monster Hunter's reached a point where they do this like whole map thing and no loading screens, I feel like they can't go back now. 
we can't go back to loading screens anymore like that's just we've we've reached a point where like that's not going to cut it anymore so no so i'm pretty sure with rise they're not going to have loading screens um you'll just get dropped into the whole map but i'm expecting that the map is going to be smaller because uh they are not going to be able to do something as as large and uh, it probably won't be as... It'll probably shift just a teensy bit back more towards the fantasy of older Monster Hunters rather than the realism. Because, like, uh, World looked very realistic and, like, your characters looked very human. Whereas, like, in older Monster Hunter games, your characters looked a little bit more like anime characters or cartoons or something. Um, yeah. So we'll probably go back to that more as a, as a thing, which is going to be exciting. But really, I'm just excited for, like, fun weapons again, man. I want weapons, like, there are some, okay, I'm going to list some weapons that I missed, like, really badly. Um, the Bone Scythe, uh, <laughs> the long sword that was like a scythe, you remember that? Yes, I do. Um, and then there was the, you remember the Tigrex greatsword from that one Tigrex event where it was a tiny greatsword? I don't. Gosh, it was uh, it was it was back in like Freedom or Unite or something. There was this, there was like a quest to like fight two Tigrexes or something like that in the arena. I want to say maybe. Oops. Um, and the reward for it was this Tigrex greatsword that was just like small. It was called like the Tigrex Tooth or something. It was like a small greatsword. It still had the range of a normal greatsword, but uh, man, you were really on the struggle bus with this with these eyes. I really am. Would it help you if I gave you a hint that he has tiny little beady eyes? Like itty bitty nope, little black beady going. eyes? All right. That's not where this is going. Okay. This is for memory. Yeah, this is an artistic take on, uh, on, on Kaku for sure. <laughs> oh, God, you're fucking. <laughs> you're. What do you even call that? You're. Police siren light eyes? <laughs> oh, yeah. What other weapons were really fun? The popcorn? The popcorn gun lance? Oh yeah, the gun the popcorn gun lance. I like the snow bunny gun lance too. Which one was that one? It's just like a when you had it on your when you put it on, it looks like a dome. Like it looks like a like you're in an igloo. Oh, There's a gun yeah, lance yeah, you had yeah, on your yeah. back, it looks like in a gun. Yeah, yeah, and for then, sure. They also had the was it? They had one where it was like a bunny. Like a snow bunny, like a bunny man has snow, and then I think it was a sword and shield. Maybe. Do you remember like the cat's paw sword and shield and the uh... the cooking utensils? Yeah, 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 yeah. The the fork and knife dual swords, and the pizza cutter charge blade. And... I learned how to do charge blades specifically for that. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Uh, and then there was. Uh... God, what were some other really fun ones? And of course, he's got a long neck. This one wasn't. This one wasn't necessarily like a joke weapon or like a playful weapon. But I really loved the Yamatsukami wooden paddle, the paralyzed longsword that was oh. just like the big wooden paddle. That was awesome. <laughs> I miss the Yamatsukami, <clears throat> dude. If they ever brought him back, oh, that would be a fun fight. Oh, God. I missed him so much. But they're not going to because remember the snake? The one that we couldn't beat for on the 3DS? He's never coming back. Oh, the oh the one we couldn't beat specifically when we were trying to help Vince beat it? <laughs> yeah. Like, that guy's not coming back. <laughs> uh Dalama Dalamadur. Yeah. The blades the blade snake, the giant blade snake. But that's one of the things too. I would love if they created a Monster Hunter MMO where they just slowly gave us these monsters like and it would have new like maybe have a way where um let's see what am i trying to say so in this in this fictional monster hunter mmo right have all armors so like armors have skills that are good or bad right obviously and like some monsters and some some armors would have better skills than others 
but like yeah. make it so that all mo- all armor can defensively get to the same point if you put enough like time and effort into them so that even even if like this month this fictional monster hunter mmo has been out for a year and people are all wearing like elder dragon armor and fucking crazy powerful shit and then they decide to give us like Tutku, you know or something like that uh, like a weak monster have that armor be able to get up to like at you least, can at least defensively it. yeah at least defensively get up to that point so that if people wanted to rock okay that armor that. they could you know it would just take a lot longer draw me a little yamatsukami uh just, just up in the corner up in that free space just a little one just a little itty bitty balloon squid boy Oh, I remember now. Don't forget, don't forget his, don't forget his human man teeth. I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> Do you remember his? I don't. I remember oh. him looking like Cthulhu. Oh, dude, his he. I mean, he he had the mustache, but like beneath the mustache, when he would open his mouth, he had human man teeth. I don't know if you remember that. Whenever he would try and suction, did you give him ears? He has ears. He has floppy ears, doesn't he? No. I need to look him up. I'm looking them up. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. This one's not from memory. I'll give you. A, I'll give you a free pass on this one. <laughs> see. Wow, this motherfucker doesn't look anything like I remember. Type in, type in teeth too. <laughs> look at his fucking it. human man mouth. I'm not gonna look at it now because I'm scared. Ugh, I'm gonna look it up too. I'm gonna see what you're all doing. scared. Yamatsu. Yeah, the balloon boy. Oh, yeah. So if you just looked up Yamatsukami, um, it's yeah, yeah. Look, look at the fucking little figure of the Yamatsukami with his mouth open, and it's just fucking like. <laughs> Is there a figure? Oh, you can see a card version of it. Ugh. He's got these human teeth. Yeah, they were just gross. Like the inside of his mouth was just gross. <laughs> I miss Yamatsukami, man. He was just so fun. Such a fun guy. And his weapons were great too. That was the thing. Is like his weapons and armor were fantastic. So not only was he fun to hunt, but it was also like great to make his stuff because his stuff was really powerful remember he would like you do enough damage to him and he would float down and uh and then you'd hop onto his back and get carves and like you yeah would, you and like when we were re- when we were hardcore farming his stuff like we would all wear like the butterfly armor to get extra carves and we would beat him in butterfly armor so that when we jumped on his back we could carve him super fast and get extra carves i don't know if you remember that but i remember that that sounds very specific, but I don't. I, I, I don't know. I remember, I remember soloing him a lot, too. I remember I got good enough to solo him. He was hard to solo. It always took, like, 30 minutes, but it was fun, fun to do. Is his mouth? Or an oh, eye? yeah. Seeing all this fan art makes me uh, makes me happy that people like loved Yamatsukami. Oh, he was in Frontier. Sad. Oh, there was like a there was like a custom like extra extra leafy extra overgrown version for Frontier. Like we had where he had like extra forest on his back. I think is that what I'm looking at. Looks like it. Cool. People loved him. People loved this gross old man. This old man. He really was a gross old man. <laughs> Dude, I just looked over and saw your mouth. That's great. You're doing him justice. <laughs> he 
It reminds me of the what is it called? Santa Cruz hand for the skateboard when I'm drawing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do a custom uh make a custom sticker that's like a fusion of the Santa Cruz hand and Yamatsukami. <laughs> and stick that shit Does on your board have or eyes? something. He does. They're on top of his mustache. So, like, not in the middle one, like, not directly above his mouth, but draw, like, a little, like, have his eye peeking out of, like, the side right there and on the other side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Hey, yeah, there you go. <laughs> ah! <laughs> All right, that's, that's good. <laughs> that's a good fucking it. Yamatsukami. Well, I, I think that's pretty much going to do it for this episode. This is a good it one. Really I can talk about Monster Hunter for fucking 10 years. We'll probably do another Monster Hunter episode when Rise comes out. I hope so. And is we that... can do some of the monsters in Rise. Yeah, we could draw some new monsters from Rise. That would be fun. So look forward to that, people who watch this video. All two of you. All three, maybe. Maybe, yeah. If we're lucky, we could get three. We did. We did have Shout like to that third person. We did have like 17 views on our last one, which for like a brand new YouTube channel with barely any like support, that's all right. That's okay. That's pretty good. Um, that's pretty. I like it. I can fuck with it. We're doing. That's all right. I got some people who are checking it out too. I tell. I let people know about it whenever I get the opportunity to. So maybe we can grow into something eventually. That's the goal. What did Kaku look like? Oh, uh, you're gonna be really sad <laughs> if you look him up. Because <laughs> you did not do him justice, my dude. <laughs> uh, not for jaw, just cut coup in general. Where is it? Enigma, get off the keyboard. It's a uh, cut hyphen coup, I believe. Show me the monster. Like, I don't care about his weapons. Like, all it's showing me is his fucking weapons. Really? Did you do the hyphen? Yeah. What do you mean? I just typed in cut coup. That's all I typed in, and I got... I got... I'm just gonna go... I'm all gonna... monsters. I'm not seeing any weapon of his. I... There he is. Let me look. You're gonna be sad. Oh, heavens. Oh, my... <laughs> Oh no, bro. That's <laughs> not how Kaku looks. <laughs> you forgot like his big wing things. Like you forgot his I did. It's like this. <laughs> you forgot his like head wings. You like totally just decided to And you know what the funniest thing is is you've drawn him before. I've seen f you do fan art of him where you drew him correctly. <laughs> there, there Kaku that you know what that thing that just took you five seconds looks way more like cut than the other thing that you did. Oh. But to be fair, you guys I'm all shook. saw my hip knock, so I can't really, I can't lay into you too hard. My hip knock was atrocious. Here we go. I okay. love them all. They're all my babies. So you're watching it, and you've made it this far. Do the YouTube stuff, man. Like and comment and subscribe and shit. And also, we're going to try and get this shit up on Spotify. Too. And I don't know what you do on Spotify, whether you follow or like or whatever. But if you are listening to this on Spotify, do the things that fucking help us out, all right? Add us to playlist so we can see what the playlists are. Because you can do that on Spotify. Uh, that's for you guys. Um, And then... Ooh, uh, comment, like, if you had any opinions or thoughts on, like, any of the monster and shit we talked about, comment down below, because, um, uh, both me and Marcos will happily, like, reply to you and have conversations with you in the comments, so, if you want to, yeah. if you want to chit chat about stuff, yeah, I'll hop on and engage with people in the comments talking about this, so, um, and look forward to our next episode. Do we have any idea of what we're going to talk about on our next one? Halloween. Oh, that's right. Next next episode is going to be our Halloween episode. Mm -hmm. 
but we're gonna draw spooky stuff. Are we gonna do Inktober and maybe stuff? Talk spooky stories, huh? Are we gonna do Inktober stuff or just Halloween stuff? Uh, we could show some of our Inktober stuff we've done. Let's do an Inktober one instead, instead of Halloween. Well, I mean, it could be both. Let's what pick. if we? What, what, okay, what if we? Remember that thing you were talking about where we would um combine two like Inktober days, like do a random number generator and combine two. What yeah. if we did that and then make it and, spooky and then made it spooky? Yeah. So whatever the two words are, we we'll have to that. try and find a way to make it spooky. That sounds fun. Spookytober. All right. Well, I'll see you guys next week. Uh, wait, hold on. Let me fucking get rid of your stupid stream. Stop watching your stream. Get rid of that shit. So that people can see our beautiful faces. All right. Say bye. Goodbye.